Reology. Reology. When you hear that term, what words come to mind? Viscosity? Viscosity build up with time? Or breakdown with shear? Or viscosity changes with temperature? Or perhaps all of the above? The fact is, rheology plays an essential role when formulating everything from cosmetics to food to inks and coatings. It impacts all stages of material use across multiple industries, including production, pumping, storage, transportation, stability, end use application, spreading, and even product performance. I'm always surprised how many formulators know very little about rheology and the various forms it takes. Therefore, I'll review rheology in a five part video series covering the following subjects. First, in this segment, part one, it would be helpful to define rheology. Next, we will review the essential elements that affect how materials flow and deform. We'll discuss the differences amongst materials and their rheological behavior. Then we'll wrap up our first part with a clear understanding of viscosity. In part two of our series, we will review the various deformation forces that can impact a material's viscosity. And in part three, we'll examine various rheological flow profiles to help us understand how that knowledge can benefit a formulating chemist. In part four, we'll focus on the chemistry, mechanism, and application of different types of rheological agents to demonstrate their value in various systems. And finally, in part five, there will be a video on how we test and quantify viscosity and rheology using various instruments, including viscometers and rheometers. So from ketchup to cornstarch to putty and paint, it's my hope that this video series will help convey the important role rheology plays to an application chemist and to the materials that touch our lives daily. And a great place to start is with a definition. The word rheology is derived from the Greek word rio, which means flow, and logia, which means the study of. So rheology is the study of a material's flow behavior under applied deformation forces or stress. Now let's review the essential elements that affect how materials flow and deform. There are four essential elements that we have to consider when a material flows or is deformed. The first is the material's inner structure. How is the material built? What is its molecular makeup? The second essential element revolves around morphology. When molecules associate and bond with each other, what is the shape and size? Is the material composed of small needle-like structures or bulky cotton-like structures? The third element concerns the outside forces that stress the material and causes it to deform or flow. Materials can be pulled apart, compressed, or sheared. In each case, their flow will behave differently. The fourth element is the ambient conditions. What environment is the stress material in? For example, at what temperature? These are the essential elements of rheology. Let's take a brief look at the most important differences between materials and their rheological behavior. First, we can simply divide all materials into liquids and solids and say that liquids flow and solids don't. But that's not really a good scientific approach. In the real world, materials are more complex from salad oil, glue, and shampoo, to facial creams, jelly, and car tires. These materials should not be defined simply by two words. Then how can we define these materials better? Well, with rheology. Rheologically speaking, most materials are viscoelastic. Nearly every material is made with a viscous portion and an elastic portion. If a material is more viscous, then it's a liquid. 
If a material is more elastic, it's a solid. The materials with the highest viscous portion are called viscous liquids or Newtonian liquids. At constant ambient conditions, no matter how they are stressed, Newtonian liquids will always show the same viscosity. Examples include water and salad oil. Viscoelastic liquids are liquids with an elastic portion. Whenever these materials are stressed, they flow, but they also exhibit a certain level of stiffness. When viscoelastic solids are deformed by an outside force that is not too large, the inner structure of these materials sticks together and tries to retain the material's original form. Elastic solids always show the same level of stiffness as long as their structure is not destroyed. Generally, when we think of flow, particularly with liquid materials, we typically think of viscosity. But viscosity is only one aspect in rheology. Viscosity is a measure of a fluid's resistance to gradual deformation or flow by shear stresses. It describes the internal friction of a moving fluid and therefore its thickness. So, a fluid with a large viscosity, like honey, resists motion because its molecular makeup and morphology results in a lot of internal friction between neighboring particles that are moving at different velocities. But a fluid with low viscosity, like water, flows easily because its molecular makeup and morphology results in very little internal friction when it's in motion. So basically, a liquid's viscosity depends on its chemical structure, its morphology, and the attractive forces between them. Now that we have some understanding of how viscosity relates to internal friction, how is it affected by deformation forces? We'll cover that in our next periodic news publication, Rheology Part 2. In the interim, you may want to check out the benefits provided by the rheological agent highlighted in this periodic news publication, King Industries, Disparlon, AQH 800.